The Unbounded, a timeless mythologem of a watery void existing before existence itself that is itself nothing but responsible for giving rise to everything can be found in many cultures all over the world. In ancient Babylonian culture, we meet with the concept of Enuma Elis, which is a watery void that is responsible for giving rise to all things. While in the book of Genesis, we meet with, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Waves of space-time, anyone? The ancient Egyptians also speak of an endless deep, and in Middle Kingdom hieroglyphs, we meet with I am the eternal spirit. I am the sun that rose from primeval waters. The Chinese talk of the Qi Cai, which is the self-existent, or darkness, that is responsible for giving rise to the boundless age. And the Mahayana Buddhists speak of the great emptiness, or sunyata. What is significant about this watery void as a precursor to existence, or even the ground of existence, we can see that there's intuitions here already of waves of space-time, or the fact that the universe is a giant cosmic ocean, or what actually Frank Wilczek calls it, is a multi-layered, multi-level superconductor. I just want to call it a cosmic fish tank, but maybe we'll get there. Today, however, I wanted to talk about chaos, but not chaos theory, the actual ancient Greek cosmogony. Or primeval goddess that is responsible for the creation of the world. So chaos in ancient Greek mythology is actually the cosmic womb of the whole universe out of which everything came. She's the mother of heirs or misty essences. And I know you're like, what the hell's an heir? Well, heir, like... Basically, she's the nothing that is responsible for giving rise to the other nothings that we know to be as something. So that's kind of a strange thing, but darkness is something that is nothing, and light is something that is nothing. And chaos herself is represents or personifies the atmosphere. So she represents the air between the heaven and earth. So one of the first things that she brought into existence or gave birth to was the god Erebus, which is the personification of netherworld mists and is the god of darkness. So here again we can see we're talking about something that is kind of known to be known to us as nothing. Then chaos birthed Nyx, which is the goddess of night. Then so we can see here that even darkness and night had to be born out of nothing. Then, rather incestuously, Erebus and Nyx get together and they create what the Aether. And Aether is the god of light and personifies the ethereal mists of the heavens, so up in space or way out in the heavens. Now that's especially significant because Aristotle thought, or Aristotle thought that all the planets and stars were moving through the ether. And when you fast forward 1600 years or so, and you have Faraday and Maxwell starting to discover the electromagnetic field, Faraday wants to say that um, electromagnetic, the electromagnetic field is just there and it's part of mere space, but Maxwell wants to bring in the idea of a luminiferous ether that is responsible, that is the material responsible for allowing waves of light or electricity and magnetism to move through it. So this ether idea is an extremely pregnant concept and it's got a huge history. So that's what's interesting about chaos. She's the mother of misty essences or airs. And air, we know, like it's, it's, we know it's there, but it's nothing. We know it's there, but it's like nothing. It's something that we know to, as nothing, which is interesting because that's the same way that we know the, say, the magnetic field. When you pull a magnet off your refrigerator, you can feel the force, but you can move your hand through it. 
So it's like there's it's like there's nothing there, but we know there's something there, and it's a magnetic field. Finally, in ancient Greek, the word chaos etymologically means gapes open or gapes wide open. And that also shares a Proto-Indo-European root with the Norse concept I haven't spoken about yet, but the Norse also have a sem like a similar mythology called Ginungagap. And Ginungagap and chaos share the same Proto-Indo-European root meaning to yawn open. So what's where I now this is me thinking now where I think chaos comes from or the idea of gaping wide open to bring a world into being is we do this like four million times a day every time you blink and you open your eye you have that you it gapes open and you bring a world into being and the world you're bringing into being is aether the very light itself and it's something that's nothing but you you bring it into being just by opening and there's that yawning divide when you open it up so yeah so chaos is pretty significant mother of all things even though she is no thing and this you can find this everywhere throughout the whole world so yeah that's what's especially significant about chaos she's the mother of misty essences which are basically what I think of as adumbrations of what we now know as fields if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more content in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.